Over the last few years, many Destiny YouTubers and Twitch streamers have come and gone. Some of them moved on to different games and found success, and some of them quit YouTube entirely. So today we're taking a look at 9 Destiny YouTubers that have moved on from Destiny or quit YouTube. Guys, um, before we kick this video off, I would just like to say uh, thank you guys so much for uh, 50,000 subs. It's um, pretty crazy that I made this far from just playing video games, but uh... Long before he was known for being one of the biggest Fortnite channels, Tfue's notoriety began in 2015 with challenge modes in the Crota's End Raid for Destiny 1, posting the first ever 3-man Crota kill. Tifu would continue to post numerous challenges for Crota's End and would eventually go on to be one of the founding members of Clan Redeem, and would continue posting challenges for almost every piece of endgame content in Destiny. Come the release of the Taken King, Tifu and Clan Redeem would attempt Worlds First for King's Fall, but they would end up in 26th place. Still, they continued to post speedruns and challenges throughout the year. It wouldn't be until Wrath of the Machine that Tifu and Clan Redeem would achieve a Worlds First raid clear. And following that success, Tifu would continue to grow in popularity by completing more challenges like the two-man Axis kill. And with the release of Destiny 2, Tifu and Clan Redeem would attempt a world's first clear of the Leviathan raid, but would come up short. And this is around the same time that Tifu was getting into the Battle Royale craze, streaming both H1Z1 and Fortnite. And ultimately, Tifu would find wild success with Fortnite, and would end up leaving Destiny 2 behind. Which ended up working out great for him, becoming one of the biggest Fortnite channels both on Twitch and YouTube. This has been Patrick Casey with Planet Destiny, your guide to the Destiny universe. Patrick Casey, aka Holtzman, was at one time one of the most recognizable content creators for Destiny. Holtzman began his content creation for the YouTube channel Planet Destiny, where he would create guides, reviews, and host the Planet Destiny podcast. While he wasn't the only creator who worked on the Planet Destiny content, he for sure became the face of the brand, despite not being the one who even created the channel. It wasn't until October 2016 that he would end up leaving Planet Destiny to create content on his own channel, something a lot of other creators had already done, which left Planet Destiny to significantly drop off in viewership following his departure. Holtzman would continue to post reviews and guides on his own channel, and host a new podcast called DCP Live, which included many of the original members of the Planet Destiny podcast. In 2018, Holtzman would end up leaving content creation briefly as he would be hired on at Bungie to fill a gameplay specialist position. And after that three month period of time, he would return to streaming and creating content for YouTube until 2019, where Holtzman would get another contract to work at Bungie as a gameplay tester, which would last for 10 months, leading to another gap in content creation. Now surprisingly, this wouldn't be the last time that this happened, as Holtzman would get another short term contract to work at Bungie. Only this time, his return to content creation and streaming would be much more sparse, and no longer Destiny focused. Flash forward to December 2021, Holtz would be hired on at Bungie in a much more permanent position as an associate AI designer. Quite a journey for Holtzman, going from a reputable content creator for Destiny to working on the studio that develops the game. One half health. Half both tethered. I see the jump snipe on uh, Truth again, and hit the other jump snipe to win. GG. Nice. Good game, guys. Dr. Lupo began his Twitch and YouTube career with the release of Trials of Osiris in Destiny 1. And for nearly two years, Lupo was one of the most popular Destiny streamers centered around Trials and other PvP-related content. And understandably, his gameplay was addicting to watch, and he was one of the few mouse and keyboard players on the game, even with the game being console only at the time. So that was pretty interesting. In 2016, Lupo had begun branching out to other games like Overwatch and PUBG, and in early 2017, H1Z1, around the same time that he would become a full-time streamer. He would begin focusing on the battle royale genre, which would pay off big time with the release of Fortnite later that year. Lupo quickly grew on Twitch, reaching a subscriber count of nearly 33,000, and continued to thrive with the battle royale genre. And during the last few years, he has returned to Destiny 2 several times very briefly for a few streams, but ultimately has found success outside of the game that he began his career with. What is going on guys, Wally here with another portion of the lore series. And today, we're going to try to better define and better understand the Traveler. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. 
Sir Wallen was the first Destiny lore channel I discovered back in 2014, and quickly became a favorite of mine. But Wallen started making content years prior as a Battlefield creator, before creating Destiny content. And just a few days after Destiny 1 launched, Wallen would post his first lore video about the Fallen, reading from grimoire cards, and sharing his thoughts on the story. He continued to post more Destiny-related content, sprinkling in some lore videos as time went on. However, his lore content would be his most popular, and pretty quickly he began focusing more on lore videos solely, and would be the primary content creator for making lore videos for Destiny at the time. He would also make regular appearances on the Planet Destiny podcast and create weapon reviews for them as well. Over the next year or so, around the time of the Taken King, Wallen began posting less and less on his channel and became more critical of Bungie and Destiny. And with the release of The Division, he began posting both guides and lore videos related to that game for a few months. He would return to creating Destiny lore videos at a much less frequent rate, however he also created lore videos surrounding other franchises like Star Wars, The Elder Scrolls, and Mass Effect. And Sir Wallen would continue to post the occasional lore for Destiny 2, but his last video on the subject is from over two years ago. Welcome everyone to today's video where I'll be guiding you through the normal version of the Zero Hour Secret Mission and helping you beat it solo. Ninja Pups is a YouTuber who had been creating content for almost 10 years, who really hit their stride creating Destiny 2 guides. From finding collectibles to solo flawlessing dungeons, Ninja Pups was your go-to channel for tips and tricks in Destiny 2. In April of 2021, Ninja Pups posted a YouTube video titled Moving On, with the message centered around leaving YouTube to pursue other avenues in life, and simply wanting to leave behind content creation. Definitely an unexpected announcement, but one that I can respect. Hey everyone, MTAST here, and welcome to another episode of Crucible School. On this one, we're going to be talking about why you feel like you're getting worse at this game. Why you feel like you suck. MTASH began his channel centered around real-life situations and scenarios, primarily in a comedic context, but quickly changed up his content once he started finding success with the occasional Destiny upload. From PvP to PvE, MTASH covered many different aspects of the game, and really began to blow up with his Crucible School series, where he provided tips and tricks to help players improve at PvP and he would primarily focus on PvP-related content for the duration of his time covering Destiny, and also grew a very successful Twitch channel, and for over five years would be a notable creator in the Destiny community, even shoutcasting for Destiny 1's eSport tournaments. Well, in September 2020, MTASH would make a major change with the release of Genshin Impact. He would find incredible success with Genshin Impact content creation on YouTube, rising to be one of the biggest creators in the Genshin community, getting millions of views. Pair that success with what seemed like him losing interest in Destiny 2, we see one of the most popular Destiny YouTubers and streamers make a complete change to Genshin-only content. And it's really worked out well for him too, gaining over 150,000 subscribers in the first month of his Switch. And while he's made a few videos about Destiny 2 since the Switch, they've only ever been a one-off here and there, and it appears Genshin is the future of his channel. What's going on guys, it's your boy DPJ here today with another Destiny video and in today's Destiny video we have top 5 reactions to that Galahorn dropping. DPJ was a content creator who posted funny moments and highlight clips from various games prior to Destiny 1's launch, but his channel exploded with the release of Destiny. Guides, funny moments, anything related to Destiny, this guy was on top of covering it. He stopped posting Destiny content prior to Beyond Light's launch, and would make a Why I Quit Destiny video almost two years after he switched up his content, citing things like cancel culture, a toxic community, and simply just being burnt out and bored with the game. And he said while the money was good, he just didn't want to continue posting content about Destiny. Hello everyone, this is SC Slayerage. Uh, if you feel like your two of Destiny hasn't stood up to your one, this video is for you. Slayerage, aka The Legend himself, was a Destiny YouTuber who gained notoriety by being one of the first to post Destiny challenges, meaning things like raid solos or low man raid completions, and his first being a three man vault of glass run. But the most notable achievement that skyrocketed him into this rise of fame was achieving the world's first solo Crota run, which he did just a week after it released. He would continue to impress with various other solos, low mans, speedruns, and even PvP montages throughout the next few years. In Destiny 2, Slayer Ridge's team would be the first to complete the Leviathan Raid, which was a huge accomplishment. However, this would be the first and last time he would find himself getting first place in a raid race, 
with his next closest being third place in Deepstone Crypt. In Destiny 2, he would continue to do low man and solo challenges, but in late 2021, his Destiny content slowed down, with his last Destiny video on YouTube being posted in November of 2021, and on Twitch has made a shift to mostly Overwatch 2 streams. Hey everyone, in this video, I'm taking my buddy Fregzy, who is a fresh New Light player, through some of the secret missions and dungeons in Destiny 2. Marco Style was one of my favorite Destiny 2 creators for a very brief period of time that he was making content for the game. Starting out as a Division YouTuber who dropped off after being disappointed with the Division 2 in 2019, Marco Style would give Destiny 2 a try in July of that year, and quickly became one of the best channels in the community. Where in the Division, Marco would do guides and discussion videos on the game, with Destiny 2 he'd create some very highly edited, high quality, funny moments style videos, sharing his raiding experience and hilarious moments with his friends. Unstable energy. Now we can actually damage. Big damage. Wait, that's it? That's the whole mechanic? No, they taking me, Marco. <laughs> oh, shoot it, shoot it. <laughs> the fuck, what are you guys doing? Bruh. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Dude, they were taking me. <laughs> but almost two years later, Marco began posting less Destiny and briefly switched up to posting Valorant gameplay. And after some backlash from fans who wanted to see more of his Destiny content, he would address the topic in a video where he shared some of his thoughts on the game. He talked about Destiny 2 becoming a bit boring for him, and he was getting a bit tired of the formulaic content release schedule that the game had, and followed up in another video with some more thoughts on the monetization of the game getting out of hand. Since then, Marco Style has still posted Destiny 2, although much less frequently, and branched out to other games and topics with a more recent switch to long-form video essay style content, which is also really high quality, and I'm anxiously awaiting to see what he'll post next. Now this isn't all the Destiny YouTubers who have quit or left the game, others have even been pushed out or banned, but maybe we'll cover that topic in another video. Hope you enjoyed the video, leave a like if you did, and I'll see you all in the next one.